Welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today starts the FL Studio only series. We might narrow that name down a bit, maybe the FL Studio series, where we make beats using just native plugins in FL Studio. This way you don't have to worry about third-party plugins, third-party synthesizers, effects, anything else. We're just going to use what comes with FL Studio and show you how you can get decent results to great results using just the standard uh, stuff. So what we're going to do is open up the browser and we're going to create a Drake track today um, using various synths and, you know, samples. So let's open up the browser. Let's go to packs. Let's go to drums. Actually, not drums. Let's go to legacy. Sorry. And let's go to drums. And this legacy pack was, you know, in the initial uh, versions of FL Studio, like seven, eight, I believe in nine, um, there were drums that were, you know, set pack. And they call it legacy now because I guess it's old, but these sounds are actually still used um, in lots of genres, believe it or not, especially hip hop. I mean, some of the kicks that you hear are actually from this legacy pack. So let's go to vintage, though. We're not going to go to hip hop. So the vintage is essentially sampled like an 808 drum machine. So you have that 808 bass, cowbell, like a hi-hat in the style of the 808 drum machine. I'm assuming it's the 808 drum machine. So believe it or not, Drake likes to use the snare. Okay, so anyway, let's open up snare, VTSD. I know you're trying to follow along, so I'm trying to keep it straightforward and straight to the steps. Um, let's open up VTCHI hi-hat. Let's open a new channel. I'm right-clicking, open a new channel. I'm gonna open up that symbol, still used in trap music. Let's open up a clap, still using almost every dance song. Um, let's see what else. Let's use this kick. I'm going to show you how to kind of reshape the kick to make it your own. Or we can go to the hip hop folder under legacy drums, go to hip hop, and we can select a kick from here. So let's actually, let's select that kick. I like that. We can always swap out the kick later. Okay. And then we even have a snap that you hear in almost every song. So this stuff came straight from FL studio. Um, like hit songs have this stuff in it. Okay. Um, now let's see what else we need from the drums. Let's close that up. Now, an easy way to close up the browser is cl click the collapse structure button up top. Let's X out. Let's go to our, what's called a channel rack where we see all our samples, which we imported. Let's right click hit D to delete the sampler because it's blank. It doesn't have anything in it. And now let's start to build our track. So the first step I like to do is make sure we account for the sounds by sending them to the mixer. So let's double click, send everything to the mixer. By double clicking, make sure it's all highlighted. Go to your mixer, right click, insert one, go to channel routing, route selected channels starting from this track. That will auto name and auto route the samples into your mixer. So it saves a lot of time there. Now if you wanna see these numbers on the side of your samples, you wanna update your FL Studio to 12.1, I believe, has this update. Um, or one point something, so 12.1 something. Um, so update to the latest version. They were still work, working on 12.2 at the time, so there's still some things they're working out. So they even caution you not to go full on if you have vital information that you wanna protect. Anyway, so now we have the drum selected. Um, let's dig into instrumentation. You know, what are the type of instruments you're gonna see used in a Drake track? First, you're gonna see a Moog style bass, and we're gonna create that using GMS. So go up to the top where it says add, go to channel and open up GMS. Now click on bank and go to user and go to default. This will reset the plugin to where it's not manipulated. It's just a simple saw wave. And I'm going to show you how to build a base, a Drake base out of that saw base. Now click control L to send that to the mixer so that it auto names it for you. So the base, that's going to be the base. I'm going to right click and rename this Drake base. Let's call it Moog bass, actually. And Moog is a famous uh, bass synthesizer um, from retro times, and it still is very popular today. Now let's close out the browser, and uh, what else do we need for a Drake? We need a pad, so let's open up another channel. Let's go to GMS again, because, uh, or you can go to Harmore. Let's try different plugins. Let's go to Harmore this time. Where are we at? Harmore, Harmore, okay. This is the demo version. So we can't save the preset. So when I hit control S, you're going to see a sign that says 
Uh, one plugin using this project is limited to demo versions, so you can't save it technically. But I'm going to show you how to program a pad there. Um, and again, hit Control L to send the stuff, the new stuff to the mixer to get auto named for you. So that's going to be the pad. So let me rename this Drake pad. Let's call it Soft Pad. And what else do we need for a Drake song? We have a mode base, we have a soft pad, and we need a high lead. So let's open up another plugin. Let's go with 3X OSC, for example. And we can create a high pitch lead with this plugin. So let's hit Control L, send that to the mixer. And again, rename it just so we know what the purpose is, a high lead. And I should actually call it Detune. So I'm going to put DET for Detuned. So now that we have all the sounds, now let's start building out the different structures that we need to build a somewhat of a song. So let's X out the windows and let's go to the playlist and let's go to the top left corner. Let's right click and go to pattern and left click and drag that pattern in. So we have a four bar block that has nothing in it yet. Make sure we go to song mode by unhighlighting that area. Let's go to pattern one and let's start building out a rhythm. So this is going to serve as our kick and snare. Now for the rhythm, we need to right click and tap the tempo. So we're at about 87 BPM. And go to pattern one. We're going to start with just the kick and just the snare. I see it all the time. Producers put everything into one pattern. That is going to mess up your songwriting technique tremendously. Um, and it's going to make things less fluid. So let's start with the kick. Now, without getting too deep into kind of more technique, this kick needs to be tuned down a bit. So I'm pulling that pitch down to about negative 70 cents. So that's how you retune samples. So I want to go boom. So that's the pattern. So let's turn on the metronome just to get a reference. I'm also going to change the pitch of the kick later. We're not going to worry about it right this second. So I want to go kick, snare, 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 snare. So let's add the snare in. And that's the common rhythm you're going to hear for Drake. Boom, clap, 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 clap. So you can follow along and copy if you want. Okay, so that's song mode. So now we have the drums in a two bar uh, sequence. I might change out hard more, I'm not sure. If it keeps giving me that error. Um, but let's drag this out. That message, I mean, not an error, it's a message. Um, and let's open up pattern two. And here's where we're gonna add the hi-hats. So it's gonna be very simple. We're gonna right click, fill each two steps. That's it. Now we're gonna go to the playlist, click on the paint tool and go to track two and add the hi-hats for the next section of eight bars. So it's kind of, I'm getting rid of Harmore. I don't even think, it probably will confuse you. This is too much for beginners. So let's just swap it out for GMS because I like to hit control S a lot and that will get annoying. So let's go to bank, user, click on default. And let's hit control S and rename this. Um, let's rename this, what was it, soft pad. Also, I wanna make sure you can open up these sounds because you're gonna get the project files as well. So I wanna make sure you can open up the sounds. Um, so let's, okay, so pattern two with the drums. That's a little slow. So let's actually left click so that all the sequences are filled. Now in the mixer, we can kind of level out different sounds. So let's go to our mixer tab and lower down the hi-hat. It's just too loud right now. Very simple. Let's go to pattern three and let's add a clap where the snare should be, which are on the red spots usually. So let's add that in as a variation here. So this is a clap. So you can see we're letting the beat build over time switch back to song mode let's go to pattern four now and where we at let's add a snap now the snap is going to serve as a soloed kind of area so let's continue on the pattern and we're going to not play the kick in the snare we're going to let only the snap play at that time and it's going to play the pads in the bass so that's going to be a snap only section here for eight more bars and uh, let's go to pattern five and now we're going to start programming Let's actually fill in the symbol before we 
go any further. So here's a symbol on pattern five. We're going to add that symbol every, let's say every four bars, let's add a symbol. So you get the idea of the sequence there. It changes over time. It's not just the same thing over and over and over again. Now also keep in mind that we're working on different elements in different patterns. It makes it a lot easier when we come to the playlist area to formulate a nice puzzle piece, I like to call it. Um, you know, I mean, we can take a nice all the puzzle pieces and put it together to create a nice puzzle. And we can create different variations as we like without having to go into different patterns, clone them a billion times just to make one small little change. And it keeps it very simple. Let's go to pattern six now and let's start building the base. Now here's what where a little sound design comes into play, but as long as you follow along, you're gonna get the same exact sound. Let's click on GMS. It starts off with the saw patch. Now what I want to do is lower the octave so I don't have to play so low on my keyboard. Let's lower it down negative two octaves. Next step, let's turn up the amplitude a bit. So it's nice and loud. And uh, let's go to the voices and let's left click and pull that up to about eight voices is a good spot. Okay, you're gonna hear the phase moving around. Now for Drake style, he likes to stereoize his bass. So let's left click on the stereo and pull that to about 70, 80%. So you get a nice wide sound. Now we need to filter out the sound um, but before we get into filtering, let's click on the noise and just see how far we want to pull the noise up. Let's pull the noise to about 20%. Now the detune is how we, I'm just going to demonstrate it so you know what it does. It basically makes the chord sound, I mean the note sound more lush when it has multiple voices. If we lower the detune, it's going to sound very sharp. So let's lower it just to hear what it sounds like. Very sharp and aggressive, like EDM music. And as we pull it up, it creates that lush spread. What it's doing is changing the pitch for each individual voice so they don't clash frequency-wise. Okay, now we need to add a filter to the sound. So in the bottom left, you're gonna see the filter section. It's set to LP, which stands for low pass filter. A low pass filter allows low frequencies to pass and it cuts out the high frequencies so that we're only left with the low frequencies. Um, we need to pull down what's called the cut off frequency, basically a point in which Anything above that frequency will be cut out. So let's pull down the cutoff frequency. Now we have a nice muffled type of Drake bass. Now we still have a couple more things we need to do to create the Drake bass, which is increase the resonance a bit to hollow out the sound. Now you can see the volume got, you know, substantially lower. So let's turn up the amplitude again. Let's lower the cutoff a little bit more to about 39%. Resonance is about 50%. Now we need to activate what's called portamento. So portamento is not, well, it is found on the first page, but let's keep it simple. Let's go to the wrench tool. Let's activate portamento. And also let's activate what's called monophonic mode, which allows us to play only one note at a time. Mono meaning one. Now the portamento is the amount of slide, pitch slide that it, the plugin will do. So turn the slide meter up to about 50% or 60%. So when I overlap notes, you can hear it sliding pitch. Now I'm going to open up the cutoff filter just a little bit, maybe 45%. So we get a little more tone out of it. And there you have it, a Drake bass built with GMS. Um, so let's start, pro well, let me think. Should we start with the chords or the bass? Let's start with the bass just to keep it straightforward. Um, let's add pattern six into the playlist. Let's call this the bass. 
and we're going to play really long notes. So my ear wants to hear G for some reason. Now, what I like to do is play the bass in a higher octave so I can hear the tonality of it and then lower it down. So what I did was hit control up to raise this note up an octave so I can actually hear what's going on. Now I wanted to go to D sharp. Now what I'm gonna do here is make sure these notes overlap so that it activates the portamento mode where the pitch will slide from G to D sharp. Then we're gonna go to A sharp, then down to D. Now some may say it's very eerie in their ear or very uh, straight in their ear. So let's hit control down. Now, if you have iPhone headphones, you might not be able to hear this right now um, because it's such a low octave. So let's go back to the bass and let's go to the wrench tool one more time and increase the slide just a little bit more so that the notes take longer to slide from one to the next. And you can even hear Drake's flow. Started rapping back with Zach and back in 85. Had a couple of dinner in 1989. But I put in overtime, still I'm on my grind. It's drizzy, drizzy. DMB. Da 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 work together. Let's go to pattern seven. Let's hit control V. So what I did was I hit control C on pattern six. Just click here, hit control C to copy pattern seven, hit control V, but make sure you're on the pad and hit control V to paste. Uh, now we are going to add a new track, call this the pad and let's add the pad during the section here where it starts to build. I'm going to hit control left click and drag to highlight this area. Pattern seven, here we have a pad, which is just a sawtooth right now. But we're gonna apply the same technique. So let's work on the sound later. Let's just get the idea of the pad being there. You have to ask yourself, do you need a chord or is it just a one note pad? It's probably gonna be a one note pad. So let's hit control A, control up so we can send it up an octave so it's not fighting with that bass. Now that might be too high of an octave, so let's try Let's try two octaves. So to duplicate this, you're going to hit shift left click and just drag it over. Make sure they overlap and hit control up. So you have two notes. Now we're going to work on the sound. So let's click on the soft pad. We're going to do the same exact steps pretty much. Increase the voices here to eight or so or more. Go to stereo and you can pull it full stereo to 100% there. Then we're going to pull the detune to about 30, 40%. So it's nice and lush. And uh, we're going to go to the wrench tool. Same thing here. Go to portamento. This time I'm not going to turn on monophonic because I'm playing multiple notes. So keep it on portamento if you still want the pitch glide without only playing one note at a time. Let's turn that up to about 60, 70 percent. So let's hear this in context. That's nice. Now what we need to do is filter it. So let's add a LP a low pass filter, just cutting out the top a little bit and increase the resonance a bit. So now we get this kind of lasery sound. Let's pull up our out. Let's actually reset this because I didn't go over that knob. How do you reset? I guess you can't reset, but uh, let me set this back to zero. Let's turn up our amplitude like we did before. Okay, so that's the pad. Okay, and the pad mirrors the bass a bit. Now, without getting getting into too much mixing, what you can do is either add reverb directly on the sound 
or if you make sure it's in a mixer track with a number there, you can go to that mixer track in the mixer. And this originally was Harmore, but this is the uh, soft pad. Let me rename these as well. That's a soft pad. This one is the Moog bass. And the third one was the high pitch lead. Detuned. Um, and so on the soft pad, let me make sure. Actually, I called it high lead detuned. So I'm making sure you don't get confused when you get the project files, which are free when you click that link below. So this is the high lead detune. So under the soft pad, let's go to slot one and let's open up Fruity Reverb 2. I'm not going to get too heavy into mixing because I know it's a different topic. So let's pull that up, the wet level up. Let's pull the stereo separation to the left. Let's turn our decay to about seven seconds. And let's turn the low cut up to about a thousand hertz and just lower the wet level a little bit more. Maybe increase the size and pre-delay just a little bit. And lower that bass element. We won't, don't want too much bass in here. You can even increase the high cut if you want. So now it sounds like this is in a bigger space. And that's the whole idea. Now I wanted to go dun, 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 dun. so let's do that on the high lead on pattern eight dun, 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 dun. so always stick with your song idea don't let the computer think for you dun. Dun, 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 dun. now I know I'm a little pitchy could be sharper or flat dun, dun. so one two three four so that's a simple thing I'm going to add. This is going to be the high lead. I'm going to show you how to program a high lead simply using a different plugin this time, 3X OSC. So once it's open, here's the default sound. It's like a multi octave uh, sine wave. What we're going to do is click on the volumes here and lower those to zero. So it's only one oscillator working. I'm going to change this to a sawtooth, which is the shape here. Very uh, gritty, but I'm going to pull up on the detune a lot. Now I'm also going to click inside the envelope and it has a built in low pass filter. So click on the envelope tab. It says fast LP stands for low pass filter. Lower your mod X, which is the filter frequency. So it's not so sharp. Now go back to the plugin tab and just detune it. And that might be too high of an octave. So let's go down. You could do it. With this knob, every 12 intervals is an octave. So right now it's set to 24. We can go to 12. That's another octave. So let's see what works best. Let's add this into the song. Call that the high lead. Right now it's a little fast. So let's click on the high lead. I'm going to show you how to delay this just behind the drums a bit. So it sounds a little more organic. Let's click there. Go to the wrench tool and we're gonna increase the time shift knob. This is gonna micro delay the sample a little to the right so it fits in the gap a little bit better. I'm gonna do it even more. So what I might do is do this for two different octaves just like we did with the pad. Hit shift, hit control A, hit shift to duplicate and hit control up. Also, let's let's show you one more thing. Uh, go to the envelope and uh, activate the envelope. Lower all your parameters to start with. So it's just a flat line. Increase your decay time and increase your release time. And let's go back to the plugin and let's mess around with the D2 knob until it sounds nice. Let's go to the mixer, lower that just a little bit. And let's add a couple more effects just really quickly. So the soft to the high lead, go to your mixer again, track nine. Let's add a fruity delay too. 
let's set it to ping pong mode p pong turn the pan knob all the way up so it has a nice pan width of left and right turn your feedback down just a bit and turn your time to two steps you can see the value in the top left corner and let's open up a fruity reverb just like we did with the pad open up the wet level pull the stereo separation knob to the left turn your decay time up to about six five seconds or so lower all your bass uh, low cut increase that to about one kilohertz and or 1000 hertz and open your high cut up a bit add a little pre-delay increase the size as you as you like so now it's a nice big sound now you can hear that little click that's from the quick attack so let's go back to the envelope and uh, the attack knob here we're going to pull it up very microscopically you can't even tell i moved it that's how microscopic to get rid of that clicking noise Once you're done a beat you generally want to record if you can the song idea for an artist so you this is where you would step into the mind of drake go in and record a freestyle or sing over the beat in the style of drake so you get a better idea of how the artist would fit into the track and also so that's it for today thanks for watching you want to click that link below to download the project files and more bonuses with the fl studio series here at busyworksbeats.com fl studio thanks for watching today be sure to like the video and share with your friends it's busyworksbeats.com